Hello, and welcome back as we introduce you to the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic alphabet. In the last lesson, we talked about the vulture character all the way to the oblique strokes. Today, we are going to discuss the next three symbols in the Egyptian hieroglyphic alphabet. If you like this channel and want to help up, please hit that subscribe button in the corner. Now, the next character we're going to talk about is the iron or the arm. Now, to draw this character, you draw a hand with the palm facing up and the thumb. Draw a horizontal line for the arm and then add a sleeve or bicep at the end. Now, this character is called an ion and is transliterated with the linguistic symbol for an ion, which looks a little bit like a small superscripted C. And the pronunciation of this is a bit odd. Technically, a ion is a voiced pharyngeal fricative. And it sounds like a camel spitting. <sighs> that sort of sound. But this is too difficult for many Western students. So we're going to pronounce it like a short letter. Uh, a short E. The next letter we're going to cover is the quail chick. To draw the letter, start at the beak, add a round head, and go down the spine. Then go back and finish the beak and draw a round belly. Then add a bent wing. Finish it up with a dot for an eye and draw the feet. Now, please note that on a lot when you draw a lot of the bird characters in Egyptian, the wings are straight. But on this particular character, the wing is bent. And that bent wing is really important because it helps to identify the character. Now, the quail chick is transliterated like a W, or sometimes a U. And it is pronounced like a W or a U like the consonant W or the vowel U. Now, this isn't a coincidence. The fact is that even in, in English, the W actually came from a double U. The W started off as a diphthong, and a diphthong is essentially two vowels that are put together to create a new sound. In this case, when you put two U's together, you get a W. That's the origin of the W in English. And that sound is repeated in many languages. So when you see a quail chick, it can be pronounced either as a W as in wave or as an U as in YouTube. U. So... A lot of this will depend upon, say, context. Like, if, if the W appears at the beginning of the word, it is more commonly pronounced with a W sound. Now, our final letter is the hieratic W. Now, most languages have two or more written scripts. In English, we have printed English, the printed alphabet, and we have a cursive alphabet. This is handwriting. We typically, in most languages, have one that's used for neat, formal writing. In English, that would be printing. And then we have fast, scribbled, take it down quickly sort of script. That would be our handwriting. Or cursive. Now, Egyptian also had a formal printed script. That's our hieroglyphs. It also had a handwritten version called hieratic. Now, on rare occasions, a character in hieratic becomes so convenient that it is brought back into the formal printed hieroglyph script. That's what we have with the cursive or hieratic W. 
is you might have noticed that the quail chick is a little difficult to draw. Well, the Egyptians felt the same way. So what they did was they had this abbreviation, which they then brought back into hieroglyphic. Now, to draw the cursive W, or the hieratic W, draw a coil that turns counterclockwise and end the coil with a downward backstroke. Draw the letter as a single line. Now, like the quail chick, this letter is also transliterated as the letter W or U and is pronounced in the same way. The quail chick and the hieratic W are the same letter for all intents and purposes. Now, we've just covered the first seven letters in Egyptian. Now, which isn't very much. I mean, you can't really do much with seven letters. So our choice in vocabulary here is somewhat limited. But I'm going to give you another word anyway. In the previous lesson, I gave you the word for vulture, which is ah, with a stroke over it. We can do the same thing with the arm character. So we draw the arm and we put a stroke under a single stroke underneath it. That produces the the word uh. And uh means arm. Now that's interesting, okay? So you've got an arm. Yeah, so what? What if we wanted two arms? Okay. Most of us have two arms. I have two arms. What if you want to talk about two arms? Well, you take that uh word we just gave you, and you add a quail chick and a double reed leaf at the end of it. So we have a we. And now we have two arms. We've turned it into a dual. In English, we pl also pluralize things by adding a suffix to the end of it. We talk about a car, but ten cars. We add an S as a suffix to the end of it. Now, let's say we have... We had one arm, we have two arms. What if we want many arms? Let's say we're trying to describe in Egyptian uh, the battle scene from Game of Thrones where there's all these dead, dismembered arms are on the ground. How are we going to do that? Well, actually, it's even easier than the duel. Because instead of a, a W-Y, or a quail chick reed, double reed leaf, it's just a quail chick. Just an oo. So it becomes a oo for many arms. So we have a for a single arm, a we for two arms, and a oo for many arms. And sometimes the Egyptians want to make this really, really explicit. So they will add three strokes underneath the quail chick to show you, to prove to you, it's plural. Those three strokes aren't pronounced. But if you just see those three strokes by themselves, you would add the quail chick. Because it's inferred, it's implied by the three strokes, even though the three strokes themselves are silent. Well, that's the lesson for today. Thank you very much for watching. Again, please hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.